everyone, it's Mike again. I'm back this weekend to do another video for uh, 10 uh, near perfect albums. Um, it's a series I've been doing for a few weeks now and uh, I do a different genre every week. And uh, this week I decided to uh, incorporate my 4AD band collection. So when I say 4AD bands, um, what I'm talking about is the label, the record label 4AD. Uh, it's a record label that uh, has been around since, I guess, the early 80s. Uh, I don't think it was late 70s. I think it was probably like 1980 and beyond. But uh, some of their first bands that they had on their label were bands like The Birthday Party and uh, a very early version of the Wolfgang Press. Um, uh, Bauhaus was on their early label. So, uh, and then they went on to carry bands like the Cocteau Twins, uh, at the Wolfgang Press, uh, Throwing Muses, Dead Can Dance, uh, Pixies, um, did I say Throwing Muses? Throwing Muses. Um, a lot of bands, Pale Saints, and then they went on to, they're still around and they're still uh, putting out great music by bands like Purity Ring and um, I think Blonde Redhead is still on there. A bunch of newer bands. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm going to talk about mostly 4 e what I consider 4AD bands, which uh, this was music I was listening to back in my college days, back in the mid to late 80s and early 90s. And uh, that's going to be most of what I'm talking about. And uh, God, there were some near flawless uh, albums being put out back in those days. And uh, also bring up a couple of newer bands um, that are still on the 4AD label, label that are really uh, near perfect albums. Um, so let's start with, I'm not going to go in any kind of order, I'm just going to be kind of random, but one of my favorite uh, bands and one of my favorite albums of all time uh, that they released is the album called Spooky by the band Lush. Um, this was 1992 on 4AD Records, obviously. Uh, and a British band, kind of dream pop, shoegazy. In the early days, they were more shoegazy and then they kind of their sound kind of clean, got cleaned up a little bit with different producers and they started to sound a little bit more dream pop kind of sounding. Um, but anyway, they put out three uh, total studio albums. This is the first studio album that they did, Spooky. Uh, fantastic album, love this album, uh, pretty much from start to finish. Again, like I've said in my past videos, sometimes about an album is just almost so perfect that I really have to struggle to find a song that I don't like on it. And it's not, maybe it's not necessarily that I don't like the song, it's just the weakest of all the songs on the album. And I think that holds true for this album. Uh, I think the weakest, the weakest song on this album is a song called Tiny Smiles. And if I were to just put that song on any other album, it would be a great song. It'd be one of the, it'd be a solid song. But on this album, with all the great songs that are on this, I think Tiny Smiles is the weakest. Um, I just listened to it though right before I made this this uh, video and I'm like this is a damn good song so it kind of sucks that I have to pick one out but I will say that that one is the weakest of the 12 songs that are on this record. Uh, go check it out. There's uh, also I, I, will rec I will recommend the song For Love on this album. It's one of the best songs that was released as a single off this album. Um, I think that the single version is better than the album version. So if I didn't have Tiny Smiles, I would recommend that For Love off this album is weak only because I know there's a better version of it out there. And I would recommend the single version over this uh, album version. So anyway, this is this is the what the album cover looks like when it was domestically released, I believe on Reprise, maybe. Um, I forget exactly, but this, this is a UK version printing of this. This came with the uh, origami box set. Uh, but the original, they also released an original on uh, 4AD Records. They released a 10-inch, a double 10-inch version, and this is the artwork, what the artwork looks like for the double 10-inch. So one of my favorite albums, absolutely uh, worth having multiple copies of this because it's just so freaking great. Uh, Lush Spooky, 1992. Next album, I mentioned uh, The Throwing Muses. Now this is the Sire UK, or the US release of this, the US album cover. And the reason why I didn't buy the 4AD version of this is because I really, nostalgically, I just love this album cover. It just, it always reminds me of this album, House Tornado. And I, I do like the 4AD version with the artwork that's done on that. It's a lot different than this. 
but I prefer this when I purchase. I used to have this on record a long time ago and I sold it, blah, blah, blah. And when I went to go repurchase it, I purchased the Sire version because I love, I just love this album cover. Uh, but anyway, fantastic album, my favorite. It's probably my favorite Throwing Muses album. Real Ramona is, is one of my favorites as well, but that's a very expensive record to get and they haven't repressed it lately. So uh, I'm stuck with uh, just showing this one as my favorite for now, because uh, it is. And uh, I don't know, all the albums are freaking awesome. But if I would have to pick out one that I don't care for as much, I would say The River. Um, it just It's kind of slow at first and then it picks up at the end, blah, blah, blah. But uh, I don't know, it's just kind of the weakest song on here. Uh, when I listen to the whole album, I love listening to the thing the whole way through. And, I, and The River is the third song on the first side and it just kind of brings everything down to a halt and then starts back up. And I just like the 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 momentum that carries through this whole album kind of gets stopped at that song. So, uh, my least favorite. 1987, House Tornado by The Thurin Muses. Love them so much. Uh, fantastic band, fantastic album. Next one, this is not what I would consider a 4AD band because they're kind of a newer band. Um, there weren't, they weren't a band that I listened to back in my college days. Uh, but they are a new band on 4AD. It's a band called Purity Ring. This is their third album called Womb. They've been on 4AD the whole time since the beginning. And uh, they are a synth pop, dream pop kind of band out of, uh, where are they, Edmonton, uh, Canada? Edmonton, Alberta, up in Canada. And they are fantastic. I remember hearing uh, Lofty Cries. The first song I heard off their first album was Lofty Cries. And it really sucked me in. Really strange, but wonderful song. And her voice is just wonderful. Uh, Megan is the name of the vocalist. Uh, her voice is just wonderful. And uh, that was their first album. Their second album escapes me what it's called. Uh, but their second album is really good. And I went to see them in concert for that second album. This album came out 2020, right before the pandemic, and uh, or right as it was, uh, the pandemic was uh, latching on to the world, and uh, they had already had uh, tour dates set up and everything, and I have tickets to see them in 2020, and of course it got canceled or postponed, so I'm going to go see them actually in a couple of weeks. Uh, actually, two weeks from today, I'm supposed to go see them, and uh, if, all, if all holds well. And uh, this is their most recent full-length album. They released a like an EP since then, and it's okay. Uh, but this album is fantastic, and that's why I'm holding it up here, because it's a near-perfect album. I would say, uh, of all the songs on here, I think Almanac is my least favorite. It just kind of drones on and on. It doesn't really have a beat to it, and it, it's okay. Uh, but it's my least favorite of, the, of all the songs on here. So I highly recommend this album. Uh, womb if you're into like synthesizer electronic music with like a spooky weird kind of sci I don't know sci-fi or I don't it's got a proggy kind of overtone to it I don't know it's just the the the, the uh, subject matter and the way she sings and the spooky nature of the music it's just not your normal everyday synth pop kind of band uh, purity ring out of Canada Love them, uh, 19, uh, or sorry, 2020, this album came out, 4AD Records. Uh, so anyway, awesome album, check them out. Next one, going back to the old times, uh, the Wolfgang Press, uh, Birdwood Cage. This is their one, two, three, this is their fourth album, uh, 4AD Records. They were one of the original 4AD bands. And uh, this is easily one of my favorites. Um, of theirs. A uh, really quirky, weird album. Uh, they don't really fit in with the rest of the 4AD bands. They're not this kind of dreamy uh, Cocteau Twins kind of music. It's it's They're more like funk and soul and just rhythms and bass and drums. They're just fantastic. And Michael Allen, the vocalist, he's got this baritone voice and it's just beautiful. I, I just think their music is is beautiful but in a weird kind of way that they get to it uh to to get to that place uh really really unusual kind of music but wonderful i, I love this album and i would say my least favorite uh song off of this would probably be um uh, what's it called uh hang on me i don't know 
there's really no reason for me to pick that one necessarily. It's just my least favorite song of theirs on this album. Uh, the rest of them are great. I would say the side one is is pretty much perfect. I, I would show you the song listing, but they don't have it listed on the outside of this record. Um, but the first side of the album is just absolutely perfect. Not a, not even a, I mean, are all five star songs. The second side is like uh, three, four stars out of five. Uh, basically, it's really a great album. Just that "Hang on Me" song is just I would if I have to pick, I would pick that one as the weakest. But anyway, check them out, Wolfgang Press, one of my favorites. Uh, coming down to one of my, one of my all time favorite uh, albums by one of my all time favorite bands. This is actually my favorite album by them: Cocteau Twins, uh, Heaven or Las Vegas. Uh, Simon, I ordered this from the Bella Union uh, record uh, store in uh, where is it? Brighton? I don't know. It's in England. And uh, Simon uh, Raymond, who's the bassist, keyboardist, multi instrumentalist for Cocteau Twins, uh, he runs that shop and uh, he signs. Every once in a while, you'll 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 find a, a good spot to order it, and he'll like be offering like his signature on uh, these. So he autographed this for me, which is just awesome. Uh, this album is just absolutely about as perfect as you can get. And really, I should just have another video, just perfect albums. And, and this would be one of them. Absolutely. But if I had to choose, since I'm doing this whole thing with the, you know, picking out my least favorite, uh, God, it could be uh, Wolf in the Breast, maybe, or uh, Road River and Rail. There are two songs towards the end of the album, right before uh, Fro Fro Foxes and Midsummer Fires, which is a f absolutely fantastic song. Those two songs, and I think that what holds them back is because they're right in between all this greatness. So they suffer because of that. If they were on any other album, again, they'd, they'd be fantastic Cocteau Twins uh, songs. But since they're on this album, they're just, they're butt up against some really just amazing, fantastic stuff. So uh, 4AD, this was uh, their last 4AD record before 4AD dropped them. And they went on to be on Fontana after this. Um, but, uh, anyway, 4AD Records, Cocteau Twins, one of my all-time favorite bands, my favorite album of theirs. You can't go wrong with this one. This one's just absolutely fantastic. Uh, next one. This is another newer band that, uh, is on 4AD Records. Newer, or newish, uh, Blonde Redhead, uh, New York City band, uh, two Italian twin dudes that play guitar, uh, and drums. And then Kazu, who's from Japan, she's on vocals and plays guitar as well, like a rhythm guitar. I guess bass maybe sometimes, but they don't really use a bass. It's usually just guitar, drums, and vocals, and maybe a keyboard. But anyway, uh, they're fantastic. This came out in 2003, I believe, or no, 2007. This is the, their album 23. This is their second album that they released on 4AD Records. I think think they're still on 4AD records, but this was their uh, second one on 4AD. And, uh, oh my God, this is such a great album of theirs. Um, they put out a lot of really good albums and, and uh, the one right before this, uh, Misery is a Butterfly, is fantastic as well. And that's probably gonna be on a future video uh, of this, but uh, this one I'll pick first because it's really is just a fantastic album from start to finish. Produced by Alan Mulder. Uh, if you don't know who he is, he uh, worked on the uh, My Bloody Valentine's Loveless. Uh, he's worked on numerous Curve albums and coincidentally his wife, girlfriend, I don't know, partner, I don't know if they're married or not, but is Tony Halliday, the singer from Curve. So uh, Alan Mulder's been has he's just an engineering genius and he worked on this album and it's it's got a little bit of shoegaziness to it in some songs but for the most part it just sounds like a typical blonde redhead album which is kind of a dreamy indie rock kind of band uh used to sound a lot like um early sonic youth but they kind of pulled away from that and kind of came into their own by about their third or fourth album and I don't remember which, I think this might be like their sixth album or something, I'm just guessing. Anyway, fantastic album. I would say my least favorite song off of this is the third song on the first side called The Dress. Uh, and it's a fine song, but it's just, it doesn't hold up to the rest of the album. Um, just a list of the song titles on there, way too small to read. But uh, anyway, this is, these videos really aren't about my favorite songs, they're about my least favorite. And I would say The Dress is my least favorite. But uh, they're fantastic uh, band. I don't really ever see 
Blonde Redhead talked about, and I don't know why, because they're they're just a wonderful band. I, I love them. Um, seen them quite a few times in concert, and they're great in concert as well. But anyway, Blonde Redhead 23 4 d Records. Great stuff. Next one, I'm going to double dip here and do Lush's last album, uh, Love Life, released in 1985, right before they split. They were getting ready to go on tour. I had just moved to Phoenix, Arizona, or Tempe, Arizona at the time, and I was getting ready to go see them in concert, and then their uh, drummer, uh, horrifically sad, um, uh, committed suicide, and the band dissolved at that point. Um, I had already seen them for the Spooky Tour, the album that I just talked about, but um, they disbanded, went their separate ways, and they were, went on hiatus for like, I don't know, almost 30 years before they did a little uh, reunion tour and uh, did a little 10-inch record release. But anyway, uh, it's just a great album. I, they were really kind of miffed about this album. They don't, they don't, I don't think they really care much for this album. When they did their reunion, I think they played maybe one, maybe two songs off this album, but it's really great. I don't know. I love it. Uh, it took a while for me to get into their, their last two albums back in the day because I was so used to how spooky sounded, which was more of a, uh, shoegazy kind of filmy kind of sounding, uh, band. And this is more like Brit pop, dream pop kind of music. And, uh, uh, Mickey, uh, her vocals uh, went from being kind of uh, whispery in the background kind of sounding to very much in the forefront with her uh, very um, aggressive like uh, British accent and uh, it's, it was just a, a really weird change but uh, man once you once you embrace this it's just fantastic music uh so this is their last this is their third and last album uh love life i would say out of all these songs let me flip my notes over here the song 500 uh shake baby shake uh i don't know i don't like that album. i don't like that song uh it's it's kind of like a flashback to the old kind of 60s kind of music which they do a lot of throwbacks to that kind of era they they tend to like that kind of music so a lot of their b-sides are like covers of old songs from back the, back in the day but uh this song on this album it just doesn't really fit for me with the rest of the stuff i'd rather it be like a it sounds more like a b-side to me so i wish it was a b-side but that's not to say it's all it's an awful song because lush i don't think that lush has really made an awful song I, I i really love their music and again they're one of my favorite bands this is 1995 uh lush's uh love life so check them out 4ad records of course Next one, everybody knows this album. Everybody, I can't imagine why you don't love this album. You'd be crazy not to love this album. Pixies, Doolittle, uh, 1989. God, what a, what a year. Uh, what an album. This album is just damn near perfect. I love it. My, easily my favorite Pixies album. I've just recently collected all of the Pixies albums now, so I have all of them in my collection finally, but this is by far my favorite. Um, and I could go, it would be ridiculous for me to list all my favorite songs because it would be like most of them um, off of this. Uh, but I would say my least favorite, and and this is kind of the way I am about the Pixies. When there's a song that's like really popular and gets a lot of radio air airplay, I get really annoyed with it and I it loses favor with me. And the song Monkey Goes to Heaven is my least favorite song and it's probably the most well-known off this album. I don't know why that is that I don't like that song, but it just doesn't really I don't know it's not edgy it's just kind of college radio friendly just la 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 kind of song and and I don't know it just doesn't do it for me so I would it's it's just an easy song for me to pick uh, monkey goes to monkey goes to heaven the rest of the album fantastic god just an awesome album to put on your turntable and just let it play and and uh ah oh, just love this album uh pixies do little everybody shows that album though but I I think it'd be silly for me not to show it. Uh, this next one, Dead Can Dance, Spleen and Ideal, their second full-length album. Love this album. It still kind of has the tribal, the rough kind of tribal sound uh, from their first album, but it's starting to become more like orchestral and more beautiful, more dense, more, I don't know, it's just a fantastic album. Uh, again, start to finish pretty much. I would say the only song that doesn't do it for me on here, and I'm just being picky, is the song Ascension. It's 
almost pretty much an instrumental. There's a little bit of backing, kind of choral, kind of voices way off in the distance uh, towards the end of the song. But, uh, you know, it's an instrumental. So I love hearing uh, either Brendan or Lisa sing. That's, that's what I'm here for. When I put on a Dead Can Dance album, that's what I'm there for, to hear them sing. And when they're not singing, it just, you know, it's okay. It's, the music is nice but uh, I prefer them singing. So this is a 1985 4AD, obviously. I don't know why I keep saying the record label. Um, anyway, Dead Can Dance, Spleen and Ideal, love it. Love it, love it, love it. Last album, again, Double Dipping. I'm gonna put this one out. I don't see a lot of people, when they do talk about Cocteau Twins, it's either Heaven or Las Vegas, or they're talking about Treasure, or they're talking about Garlands, I don't know. But uh, a lot of people don't like this album, uh, including a lot of Cocteau Twins fans. And I don't know why, because it is fantastic. It is their last album before they broke up, uh, Milk and Kisses, uh, 1995, 1996. Uh, 1997 is when they broke up. They went back in the studio and started recording new music and they just had had it and just split. And that was that was the end of the Cocteau Twins. Um, but this album is, is just, I think it's just peak level Cocteau Twins. It's just fantastic. Uh, the only things that I would say uh, the downer on this, and it's not really that bad, the song Rilke and Heart. And I know a lot of Cocteau Twins fans will say, wait a second, Rilke and Heart, that's one of their greatest songs. Um, it's a great song, but I like the instrumental version on this EP, the Twin Lights EP. They do an acoustic, not an instrumental, they do an acoustic version of Rilke and Heart on here way better than the album version. So that's why I pick Rilke and Heart. Also, I would say this uh, the song Tish Bite, which they released as a single. Um, fantastic song, one of the best songs in the album, but uh, the album version is not as good as the single version. So if you can get your hands on the single version, it's way better, I think, than the album version. So those are my two, I guess, flaws uh, to this album. Uh, otherwise perfect album, Cocteau Twins, Milk and Kisses. Now this is not on 4AD Records, this is on F Fontana, but it's a 4AD band, so I throw them in. C all Cocteau Twins to me is 4AD, all, you know, Pixies, even though Pixies I don't think is on 4AD anymore, they're still a 4AD band to me. Same with Dead Can Dance and, and Throwing Muses, whatever. They're all 4AD bands to me. So anyway, that's what I wanted to talk about today, 4AD bands. Um, happy 4th of July, everybody. Stay safe. Don't hold the firecrackers in your hands. Put them on the ground. And uh, just have a great week weekend, what's left of it. And uh, stay safe. Love you guys. See you in a week. Bye.